Welcome back to the Spirit, Mind and Soul podcast. In this episode, I'm speaking with Rebecca. Rebecca owns Witchcrafted, which is an amazing jewellery business, which actually it's a bit more than jewellery. It's beautiful amulets inspired by magic and mother nature. Rebecca talks about losing yourself and finding your way back. It was actually a really awful health journey that prompted Rebecca to put her or turn her pain into passion um, by putting her focus on her jewellery making, which turned into a business. If you're someone who's struggling with a health crisis right now, this will be a really inspiring story for you. I'd love if you could hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. But for now, here's Rebecca. Hi Rebecca, thanks so much for agreeing to come on and share your story on the Spirit, Mind and Soul podcast. I know this is your your first podcast that you've done and you want to really share your story with your own audience as well. So thanks so much. It's an honour to to have you on and for you to go into your journey, uh, the ups and downs. So do you want to start back? I know you talk about losing yourself and finding yourself again and that the last journey was your biggest test so I'll let you take over and if you want to start from I guess when you were at college and what got you into the holistic therapies yes thanks for having me Karen I was um, a teenage mum and um, I went to college to do holistic therapies and this was about you know, finding um, myself, finding strategies, my spirituality again. And I wanted to then go on and share that with others and um, that maybe had similar experiences. So I was at college and I was also practicing holistic and energy therapies. And my college course allowed me advanced entry into university in 2018. So I decided I would do that. But my final year at college, I was encouraged to submit a business plan to the John Mather Trust Innovation and Enterprise Competition. And my business plan was to share those strategies with teenage mums. And I was very fortunate that I won and was given a business grant. That year, I also passed my driving test after the fourth attempt as well. So it felt like everything was going really well. And my plan was to build up a network of social enterprises and schools that supported teenage mums to go full-time once I'd got my degree within the year. It usually takes about a year to build up that that client base. So I thought, you know, that will give me the basis for that. So everything was going really well. And I started university and I'm so sorry, Karen, my cat, can you? That's okay. (laughs) <laughs> um, my familiar um, so I was at university and um, everything was going well I was networking with social enterprises local schools within Glasgow that supported teenage mums and then just as we're approach, approaching exam um, an assignment stage of the, the course that's <laughs> okay and um, just as we were approaching exam and assignment stage of the course I went on a wild camping trip and um, I unfortunately got bitten by a tick and got Lyme disease and I initially thought, thought that was going to be a short treatment of three weeks and things would get better but I ended up getting a neurological infection from it and I had two hospital admissions and I was just really unwell. I managed to push through and get finish off my, my university with a lot of support, extensions, but I got there. I wasn't giving up. I was advised to defer that course, um, but I just, I wanted to complete it. I wanted to challenge myself. Mm-hmm. And I think pushing myself at that particular stage just made the crash that much harder once the course had finally finished. And I had to take a wee bit of time to um, to work through that. Um, at that point, I was going to, to a lot of different specialists um, and I had indefinitely at that point shelved the business plan until I worked out, you know, where I was going to be with it, if I was able to pursue it. And um, I, 
had just been passed between Lyme disease is such an unknown unknown illness and it left me with a lot of pain, mobility and hearing issues. And the only thing that's really relevant during that time is I was really disempowered. All the techniques that I'd learned that I wanted to share, I'd kind of lost because I'd lost myself. And I wasn't prepared for after years of hard work for me just to have to shelve that. It was very difficult to let go. So I went on this, what can only be described as a dark night of the soul at the time, being passed between different specialists. And it was one specialist that had said to me, and it wasn't at the time I didn't take it like this, because I was just craving these specialists to be able to fix me and to get me back to my old me. And it was just this fight at that point to get back to me and to get back to who I was pre Lyme disease. And I remember my pain consultant saying to me, what do you want us to do? We can't fix your pain. You're going to have to, you're going to have to find a distraction. And at that point, I was like, so like that wasn't, I wasn't ready to hear that, but I did start doing jewellery again, which I had done when I was at college. I was self-taught and I used to do wire jewellery. And I decided, you know, I'm going to do this again. And I started getting my tools back out and I started crafting as a way off. At that point, it was just supposed to be a distraction from the pain. Um, and did and that work? Yes, it did distract because I was able to work. You know, I wasn't just sitting about with too much time to think. Art's a really, really good way of navigating transitional periods and it was a good way of working my hands but it wasn't long before I realized that actually the jewelry was doing so much more um for my healing or for this you know I'd kind of lost myself and I was trying to find myself again and the jewelry was helping me do that it was helping me realize well you know just because you can't practice holistic therapies you know you can apply your energy you can apply this ritual towards um you know your jewelry process and um also i found one of the most um powerful aspects of jewelry making for me at that point was i found that pain is a really powerful energy and this really intense pain that i had could be harnessed and rather than fighting that I could embrace it and I could use that really really powerful energy and transmute it into something that was useful that was beautiful that was art mm -hmm. and um instantly my work just flowed better my designs were better and it really at that point felt like I knew that this was going to be my path the jewelry was going to then be my path but I was still lacking so much confidence at this point and I was doing all this making and um, I wasn't sharing any of my stuff I was like hiding in the shadows and I just was mm -hmm. I don't know from being such an outgoing person being very active online I just couldn't couldn't share my work mm -hmm. and I knew mm -hmm. that I had to you know work on that and um, take that leap. Mm -hmm. I think, can we talk about that? Because I think there's so many people out there that will listen to this and maybe they want to start a social media account, maybe just to share their own healing journey, or it might be a new business that's th that they want to start that's completely different from whatever they're doing now because you your fear not just of judgment of others but the people that are closest to you because you change it's like you've you're, you've done the inner work you are not the same person so maybe you've found this new passion that you love and that you want to put out there and maybe you know make it into a, a business but you do worry about the people around you thinking who is it who is she who are they you know why you know so you it's not just judgment in general but the people closest to you so how did you what first steps did you take because I've been there myself so I can really relate here so what got you through that what were the first steps that you took and the courage where did that come from to think I'm just going to go and do this the truth is it came out of darkness 
Um, in 2022, fast forward a few years, I'd been um, making jewellery from 2000 and maybe 18, 19 um, again, and we're now in 2022. I've moved into a new house. We'd moved, we've been looking for a house that had a studio space for me. And I had this 20 meter squared room and I had all the, that, you know, all this opportunity and but I couldn't get over this fear of putting myself out there. And I remember in 2022, my pain levels and just got really, really bad and I was really struggling with it. And I had an infe a couple of infections at the time and I was back in a wheelchair and I just was in a really dark place. And I remember, and this should maybe come as a trigger warning, I remember thinking, I can't do this anymore. Like, I cannot do this. I have tried, you know, and it was just like a real kind of low moment of, but then it was just a low moment that I hadn't been expecting. And I remember this, just having these thoughts when I was thinking that and I was saying to my partner, I can't do this anymore. And he said, you know, you're doing great. And you never give yourself, you know, the, the positive reinforcement. And he's always been so supportive of me. Mm -hmm. But the, there was this internal voice and it was like the fire in me burned you know, burned more fiercely than the fire out with. And I thought to myself, you know, you've got to this stage, you've overcame obstacles, you've overcame, you know, I was a teenage mum, I, I struggled for years, I came overcame all these journeys and you've got to this stage and you're talking about giving up. What are you talking about? And I remember thinking, no, like, I need to start, whilst the jewellery had helped me find my way back to myself i i needed to do this confidence work this inner healing and i needed to commit myself to doing this the universe had blessed me with i'd got the studio that i wanted you know my work was flowing well and it was up to me now to do the messy work to then take the leap and i committed myself at that point that you know, the universe is a funny way. If you do not take the opportunities presented to you, it will make you so uncomfortable until you take the leap. And the truth is, life just became more uncomfortable not to take the leap. So it was, it was like this burning desire, and I, there's no other way to describe it. It was, it was this fire inside me that, you know, I, I, I need to find a purpose in life again. I, my life has became meaningless and I want to do something. I, I didn't need to be really successful or to be really rich, but my life had to have some purpose or meaning. And, the, you know, I had all these um, blessings and it was up to me now to, to gather them all up, to use all my experiences to that day and to do the dirty work to get to a place where I could take the leap. So, and I asked the universe to guide me. And I suppose from our perspective of where we're standing, we can't see the bigger picture. And I decided, you know, once my pain was back under control, once, you know, this dark night of the soul, had, you know, started to pass again, I was going to start weaning off the medications that weren't helping me. And I was going to start doing using my therapies again, I was going to start using my spirituality and I was going to do all that deep work to get to a place where I felt comfortable to take the leap. And I just asked the universe, you know, guide me and, and show me those signs because we can't see from where our perspective is. We can't see the bird's eye view, the bigger picture. So at that point, I had, you know, put all my trust up to the point and I decided, you know, just go with it. And I just waited for my stars to align. And then in December 2022, my studio got burst pipes. And I, like, I was just like, oh, why is this happening? I cried my eyes out for about a day. Like, why? I'm, I've asked for a sign and I've got burst pipes. So anyway, we decided that was actually the catalyst 
because that was the so after I had this you know the the crying for the day I thought you know this is the opportunity to get my studio how I want an inspirational place this is a blank canvas and it was like the catalyst for witchcrafted I just you know sorted myself out right let's get this mm -hmm. let's get it done and I put everything into it and for three months we got my studio renovated and while the studio, all my stuff was packed up and in renovation, we put so much into into the the renovation that there was just no way that I could not take the leap. So the universe is mm -hmm. this funny way of giving you the mm -hmm. push when you need it. You can't see it at the time because yeah. I'd spent days <laughs> crying over it. But mm -hmm. I probably if that the burst pipes hadn't happened, I wouldn't even be sitting here talking about it because it was going further and further down our projects and the renovation that, um, mm -hmm. you know, I just wasn't ready to launch. But the, the studio and, and being able to create a space and, and, and um, mm -hmm. that was just, that's what I needed. So once the renovations finished, that was me. I, I decided, you know, I'm going to go for it now. The first um, market I done, I didn't sell anything, nothing. And I remember discussing this with people like my dad and, and I said, you know, pricing up my work and looking at my work and stuff. And he said, but you didn't sell anything at this market. But I knew that if I put myself on the internet, if I took that leap on the internet, then I was going to be able to find my people, people that were interested mm -hmm. in my niche product that resonated mm -hmm. with them. And I took the leap. I just decided, do you know what? People either accept you for who you are, like your work, or they don't. And life's far mm -hmm. too short. I just spent five years in the shadows and I just wanted to share my work. So when I set up my page um, in April 20. 23 I didn't have any expectations I just wanted to challenge myself to put my work out there there was no expectations on me it wasn't as if I was leaving a you know a, a corporate job and I was doing this full-time it was just an internal challenge the leap was an internal one it was overcoming the obstacles of the last five years and to put myself out there and that's why I did. Yeah. And I think that's another important message there about, you know, you say you've gone and you, you know, you didn't sell anything at your first market and that can be really disheartening. But I think we always see the overnight success. We always see people when they've, when they've made it, when their business is doing great, we don't see the struggle and that, you know, and I know from being two years self-employed as well, you know, it's, it takes time you need to build up you build up trust you find your people and there's billions of people in this world if you get yourself online you will find your people it might take time but you will find them and especially being authentic being you know just being yourself like you are today as well opening up and sharing your story people are drawn to that and that's your people will find you by just being open about who you are what you do why you do it as well but yeah um I think that I'm really glad that you shared that about you know doing your market because um yeah it's not you know you're not going to it's very rare that someone starts a business and it immediately takes off it takes time you know to tell us about witchcrafted so what kind of jewelry because I've seen your jewelry and it's beautiful it's very unique so can you tell us about that what got you into that type of jewelry and what do you want to do with witchcrafted why the name tell us all about it yeah um so it is an ancient technique called wire weaving. This is one of my pieces here. Mm -hmm. You can see it okay. Right, I was on it. Mm -hmm. And it's an ancient technique called wire weaving. I'm not sure if you can see that properly. Yeah, but, it's, um, it's one of the oldest evidence jewelry techniques in the world. And that's what I'm passionate about. It's unique. But it's been found in cultures all over the world. And... What I love about, well, jewellery in general, not just this particular technique, is unlike fashion, unlike makeup, unlike hair, it changes over time. But with jewellery, it transcends the ages. 
you know, you could, I, I regularly share jewellery from two, two and a half thousand years ago and my page is referenced. It wouldn't look out of place in today's high end market. That's why I love it and I'm so passionate about it. I love the idea of, I'm a very spiritual person and my spirituality has been, um, you know, helped me through all these journeys that I've been on, all these experiences, the highs and lows, and my spirituality has helped me stay grounded and um, to be able to see things with a different perspective. Um, and which crafted so there's this element of you know ancient philosophies and then you've got my personal practice and then you've got this ancient technique and it all combines and I use my background in holistic therapies so particularly Reiki I use a lot of energy and couple that with transmuting my you know this pain this built up energy that I've got very open about that um, on my page. Um, so yeah, I've, the journey people what people see is witchcrafted is the final article, but it's been a it's been a messy healing journey to get to this point. It's an accumulation of lots of experiences um, and a lot of energy. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. This podcast is about giving other people hope and I think you've done that. So thanks so much for taking that scary leap and sharing today, Rebecca. It was really lovely to hear your story and how you got to where you are now. So thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed listening to Rebecca's story. We did have some technical issues, which you might have noticed if you were watching on YouTube. She disappeared at times, but we just made the most of it. And she did get to tell her amazing story of what led into Witchcrafted and the successful business that it's become. You can check out Rebecca's beautiful amulets. I'll leave the link in the description. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe, you'll be notified when the next episode comes out.